content is king. I don't yep. believe that you can produce too much content because there's all these filters and things like that. And if you put enough out there, more people will see it. Welcome to the Matt Laracy Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Laracy, a member of my team, and a guest. This week, we have John Paul Comez. We got it. Comez. 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 Not to be uh, confused with Combs. Not to be confused with Combs. Okay. It's an Irish last name, though. Uh, it's Irish. Okay. So, John Paul, uh, how, are you, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling pretty good? I'm actually feeling good. Yeah. Had a little bit of a late night, but... Overall, feeling good. good today. All right. And uh, season two, ep 16 is What is Title? Uh, today we have Dave Genson. David is the uh, principal of Lincoln Title, and he's been doing title work since 1998. David, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. How, how are you feeling? Are you feeling pretty feel good? feel pretty good. Pretty good. A little nervous. But, a little nervous? Uh, yeah. You're looking sharp, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So give us a little background. How, how'd you get started in, in Title? So around 97, 98, a friend of mine had a interest in a title company and they weren't doing much. Came up to me, said, hey, how would you like to come work here? And whatever you turn it into, it's yours. Uh, we started out doing like five to 10 deals a week. Uh, okay. I would get excited when I'd get 15 or get 20. And then fast forward to today, we regularly do a couple thousand residential closings per year. Wow. Yeah. Couple, so even, you know, starting off at five a, to ten a week is pretty good, though. Yeah, it's, especially uh, in the late nineties. Yeah, it's a long journey, but we got there. Uh, you know, we'll, I, I, maybe I'll cover this, but just out of curiosity, like, did you see like a huge dip in weekly come 06 or, or 08, 09? Yeah. So was anybody in, closing? So in 08, I was very worried. I didn't know what was going to happen. I yeah. didn't know. I'd, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. But then there's this wonderful thing that the lawyers created, the lawyers and the lenders, and you call it the short sales. Oh, yeah. And the short sales kept the title companies busy for a couple of years, and it worked out really well. And then by the time they were done, the market bounced back a little bit. How many, I mean, a lot of title companies closed, though, during those years. Yes, there were a lot of companies that um, left people holding the bag. Yeah. And that actually still happens to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, title is a big thing in real estate. It's a huge expense. John Paul, how much do you know about title on a scale of one to 10? You know, I want to let the expert. But where would you give title. your rating on how, how familiar you are with title? You know, probably a seven and a half. 7.5? Yeah. It's kind of a rookie score, but okay. Well, I can't so, change it now, but so, 7.5 is my official score. Okay, that's your official score. Yeah. So the average person asks me whether a buyer or seller, they say, what is title and why the F am I paying X amount for it? So what, what is title, David? What, what is this magical, mythical creature that costs so much money? So what, for, so what is title? Title is who the legal owner of a property is. Okay. What is title insurance? Title insurance is a contract between the title company and the buyer that protects the buyer from any outstanding issues or surprises that may come up after closing that might cause financial loss or hardship. So one of the things you have to know about title is it's a one-time fee. So they're going to look at you and say, why is it so expensive? But they're only paying it one time, and it lasts, the life, uh, it lasts as long as they live in the property. And one of the other unique things about title is other insurance, you're paying for future things. Title insurance, you're paying to protect yourself for the past. Mm -hmm. Well, so insurance so in general, you don't want to pay because it's, it's the only thing they sell you that you hope to never use. Correct. And then if you do use it, you get charged an extra premium for it. In regular insurance, not regular title insurance, insurance. Not title insurance. I'm just telling you, that's, that's my, my, my opinion on regular insurance. So title right. insurance is a one-time fee yes. to make sure that you're saying like, hey, this is actually legitimately mine, Yep. which is actually a big problem, especially with their international clients. I get a lot of clients that are nervous about like, well, how are other people going to know this is my property? Because in other countries, they don't do that type they of stuff, don't. Right? They don't. Have, they, ha they don't have title uh, overseas. They have attorney opinions. So you could pay an arm and a leg for uh, an opinion on who owns the property. But uh, the underwriter I work with used to do business in India and used to do business in places like Greece. And they had trouble with a lot of fraud and who owned the property. And they would, you would have a property and then you'd get five people knocking on your door saying, no, here are these documents showing that I own the property. So it is on a $200,000 house, you're going to pay a couple thousand bucks, but it protects you. I have. Uh, my wife bought a condo actually over a couple blocks away at 520 West Huron before I knew her. Uh, goes to closing, six months later gets served with papers. They say that the, um, the, the taxes on her parking, spaces, her parking space was sold. 
well, contacts the attorney who contacts the title company. They solved the problem. They made a mistake at closing. They, sh they referenced them paid, and everything was fine. It could have been a complete loss or a couple thousand dollar loss, but well, they took care of everything. But that's why we have title. That's why we have title. So my, my question of why do we have title, that's that's a good uh, example yeah. right there. So and, and for fraud. we uh, Another one was a paid assessment letter. The Believe it or not, the seller gave us a fraudulent paid assessment letter. Wow. And then a couple weeks after, the homeowner gets a letter saying they owe assessments. I think it was about 825 bucks. They call us. That's why they have title. We insured it on the title that the assessments were paid. So it covers fraud. It covers mistakes. It covers unrecorded mechanics liens. So you're protected. It's hard to explain it because the claims rate is somewhat low. You're running but, under 5%. But that, that's what you want, though. You, you don't yeah. want... I'm, I'm, I could be wrong here, but I personally wouldn't want five people knock on my door saying my house is actually their house. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So um, what about, do, do all cities have these? Title is in every city in the United States. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, and so, then, like, I know, like, so in Chicago, we go to title companies to close, okay? Um, other cities, they call them, like, ink rooms. Like, I know D.C. goes to ink rooms and some other cities. Like, why do we have... Why do we go to title companies to close rather than other people go to attorney's office or ink rooms to close? Well, you could still do closings in an attorney's office. Here, here most of them are all centrally located downtown. Um, I, I believe ink rooms in other states are just called closing offices here, so it's synonymous. Um, everybody goes to a closing office. What I am seeing in, in Arizona is you're having some closings done by DocuSign. Oh, you yes. can do that now? Uh, at least on the refinances, they do that. Refines. We don't do that here. Okay. Not yet. Um, do you think that's going to go? Do you think what people are 20 years from now are going to go to title companies to close? 20 years from now, probably not. Okay. Probably not. You still will have title insurance. You'll still have the product. I don't believe they'll be going there. Okay. Right now, you, you could have seven or eight people in a room now. Is that good or bad for your business? Uh, I don't think it would be bad. Okay. I, I think it would, it would help out on some of the costs. Some of the title companies could have 15, 20 offices. Yeah. And if you could reduce that cost, things could be a whole lot better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what about, does title like differ from city to city or state to state? Or is it all this, like, is it a federal title that we're done with it? No, absolutely. Absolutely. And California is really unique. So in California, you, um, you bring all your documents over throughout the week. So Monday, you'll bring in the deed, Tuesday, the bill of sale, Wednesday, the Alta, and they put all the documents together. And, and you're not closed and funded until the uh, lender receives their money and the deed is recorded. In Illinois, it's very different. You come to the table, you're giving me everything, and you're, you're, you're funding at the table, you're, you're getting confirmation that the wire was received, you'll hand over the keys, everybody's fine. But not until the deed is recorded in California do you hand over the keys. This year you record it at a later date. Yep, I'll, um, if you close it on Monday, we'll get it down to recording by Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh. Yeah. I mean, is that is that how they're able to close like in three days? Like, you, you ever notice that? Like, you ever watch TV shows? Like, uh, here's yeah. here's two million dollars cash. We'll close tomorrow. I'm like, done. We're in escrow. Yeah, we're in escrow. Yeah, I like that. yeah. Why do we, I mean, they use escrow. We don't we, we don't use that terminology here. Does that have anything to do with title or no? No, that has something to do with title. So what they're doing is they're depositing. They're, they're starting to put put everything in over time. So on Monday, they're going to put up their money, and Tuesday, the deed, and like I said before, and that's how they're in escrow. I mean, I don't know about you, John Paul, but I would like to say this, like, we're in escrow. Like, this doesn't sound so much yeah, cooler than, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, instead of, like, oh, we've opened escrow. up attorney review, guys. We have yeah. five business days. Instead yeah. of being, like, we're in escrow, cool. like, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's actually, go. That actually you know? sounds a whole lot better. It does. It yeah. does. Um, what, it, was there some sort of, like, federal law that got together that made title exist? Like, how did title even become something? So, admittedly, when you, you told me we were going to talk about that, I had to look that up okay yes uh, I've, so most title companies don't even know yeah so well not not a lot of people know where it came from um, yeah but I, in looking it up it came it came about in philadelphia in the late 1800s okay um somebody sold a property and uh got an attorney attorney letter saying he owned the property and there was a lien on the property but he removed the lien and then they foreclosed on the lien the guy lost the house they brought it uh, brought it to the court system the court uh, uh said that the buyer is losing his home, and that's how title was created. And then I want to say a couple years after that, it was created in Illinois. Well, I mean, you got to remember, back in the day, God, I can't remember what movie it was, but it had my boy Tom Cruise in it, but Far and Away or something like that, where they would, you know, during the land rushes, you would just go out and yep. stick up, uh, you know, something in the ground and say, this is my land. Yeah. yeah. And then you'd draw a little thing around it and be like, this is it. You can't, yeah. you can't come here. 
Yeah. You know, like, so I, I was thinking maybe they had title for that because people would just remove the stick and put somebody else's <laughs> Far stick away, there. I think it was a little you know? before that, right? I mean, I don't yeah. know. I'm just saying, yeah. like, is that maybe that's all titles started, yeah. you know? So what about with, like, buyers and sellers? Like, obviously, buyers and se- – well, not obviously because most people don't know this, but buyers and sellers each have to pay title insurance. Uh, what, is there a difference between what buyers get and what sellers get? Yeah, so the seller is typically contractually obligated – to provide title coverage to the buyer. Okay. So the t- so the seller is going to have uh, a one-time owner's policy fee, and it ranges anywhere at two hundred thousand. It comes in around seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. Up to a million, it, co- it comes close to four thousand. Wow. So that's that's the spread. And what about and, on a buyer? And on the buyer, if it's a cash deal, the buyer only has to pay half the closing fee. And um, but the seller then has to pick up the other half. Uh, right? Yes. And the reason. And I'm so how's how's cash then good for sellers? Or uh, yeah, it's good, uh, buyers because then they have to pay more money, right? No. So uh, if a, if now if a buyer has a lender, the title fees go up. If the buyer has a lender, the buyer c- picks up the whole closing fee, and picks up any lender coverages that are required. You probably see it on your HUD. All these different endorsements that they ask yeah. for, update fees, chain of title fees. Those are all for the lender. They just and, look like a bunch of BS fees. And they all add paying. up. They all yeah. add up. And the reason there's an interesting one, not to get sidetracked, the chain of title fee. We never used to have that until, until the recession and the short sale hit. There were all these house flippers, and lenders wanted to know that you weren't buying a house on a Monday and selling it on, and lending you money. Rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, and selling it on Wednesday. Yeah. So they started, uh, they added another fee to it that requires us to actually put the information of the conveyances on the title. We call it a chain of title. But totally getting sidetracked, because yeah. now I have to know, because yeah. I mean, I, I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad like a couple times, okay. and I think it's some of the craziest, most astounding, like I can't even believe like people actually did this or how somebody would buy it afterwards. Mm-hmm. But how did the title companies keep up with that? And for our listeners out there, Rich Dad Poor Dad means is that like I would buy something Monday for 100000 and Tuesday I'd get John Paul somehow stupid enough to buy it at $200,000 the next day. Uh, so how are they able to be able to, how is the title company able to keep up with that? In the beginning, you couldn't. It kind of just happened. And then we learned from a lot of mistakes and from a lot of fraud yeah. that we, we kind of keep an eye on it. Now it's something as simple as looking, um, we can go to the website, we go to the web, internet and we type in an address and we can see if there's been a rehab. Yeah. We can see why is it that he bought a house a month ago for 350 and he's selling it you know, 30 days later for 475 or, or 500, did he do work? something's going on so we look at it a little bit more we're able to do that yeah back I just, in the day when it was when it was pumping out those short sales and those flips it was hard to keep track so of. if they're not paying if they're not borrowing money to say rehab a property yeah on that chain of title could you still see that they did the work on the property on that if no you like can that? Uh, we kind of we we kind of look at it by purchase price okay we get an idea by purchase price but then you can go to the mls or you can go to a listing on zillow or redfin and see where it'll say refurbished home Okay. Brand new kitchen, stuff yeah. like that. So we're able to do it that way. So now that we got my rich dad, poor dad cue out of the way, uh, but like, well, uh, it's a great go, book. I, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's readable, you know? It's good. Um, so, you know, buyers and sellers, why, why do both need it though? So like sellers need seller insurance to insure what the title saying that like, well, so the seller is giving it to the buyers and insurance and the buyer, you, a buyer could elect not to have title insurance on a cash deal. They could say, I don't want it. I don't want to pay for it. I know what I'm getting into. I trust what I found to buy myself online. But again, we talked about the protection it offers. And when a buyer is buying in cash, his title fees are, are, are very low. Um, the closing, uh, they're going to pick up half the closing fee on a cash deal. It could be $750, could give them coverage, you know, could, the, the coverage is the total amount of the owner's policy. You could be buying a $400,000 place, so you're covered for the 400000 So, How many times do you see cash deals not have title insurance? Uh, I only know of one guy who never wants to pay it, and then his attorney convinces him to do it. Okay. Yeah. And he's, okay. A, he's a wealthy guy, and he just he hates paying title insurance. Yeah. So, um, and now on um, the buyer's lender requires buyers to get title insurance. Yeah. So, so you have no necessary. out. You have no out. Because we're also insuring the lender and their loan position that we're going to pre- that no one is going to uh, overtake their priority on the property. So who chooses title in Chicago? Typically the seller. So the seller does. But like now there's these new disclosures that buyers can choose it, right? So you can you can bifurcate a title. So the yeah. seller the seller's going to typically choose title, is going to pull title, and is going to clear title. Because when you've seen when you pull title, or you might hear from your attorneys, hey, we're not ready to close. We have to clear a mortgage or sold taxes or an old judgment. Those are things the seller clears. Um, the I've re- had deals die because of that, too. Yeah. 
Hmm. No clean title. Yeah, I don't. That doesn't surprise me, and that's yeah. probably an issue that they can't resolve, whether it be a monetary issue or maybe an airship issue where somebody has an interest in the Is property. Is cloud a general term for any issue on title? Correct. So it could be any lien, any pass yeah. through. And it could be something you're going to, you'll have a payoff for. So essentially yeah, the mortgage on, on yeah, title, a mortgage is a cloud on title. See a little cloud on that. Yeah. Is that like a big saying around the office? No, actually, oh, he's got never, cloud on that. We let's, never, we never say it. Like, yeah. like that one's clouded. All right, let's go. Let's get going out I here. I might use that when I get okay. back there today. <laughs> like I didn't know. I, you know, that's, I'd be throwing that around left and right. So, you know, in other states, does uh, does the sell side, you know, choose title in all states? So, typically, it's different from state to state. The states around here are all seller. So, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan. Illinois seller. There are about 21 states where it's all a uh, seller typically chooses title. States. So if they're, oh, there they're, you go. <laughs> man, look at this guy pulling out these yeah. terms to be 4 9 30, throwing out a word like that, huh? Oh, yeah, man, that's a blonde yeah. roast right that's there. Right. Uh, so the other 29 states or so, right? Did I do the math right quick? 22. 21 plus 20. All right, let's not, let's not embarrass ourselves here. <laughs> uh, like, would they have the buyer pull it then? Buyer and then a, a handful are negotiable. Because here's a big thing I know, cause, and I do have a lot of people, a lot of my clients ask me this, because in other states, like, a, like realtors kill it on making money off title. Like, the, the agents own title companies, or they'll, um, you know, they get a cut off the commission of the title. Is that because the buyer pulls it? Like, how do the agents make the money off it compared to, like, here, it's all... The sellers well, attorney. Well, Illinois is an attorney state. The attorney states, there's a handful of attorney states. So you have Illinois, um, New York, a handful of others where attorneys kind of really control that market and control the transaction. You need an attorney to handle these things. This is the biggest transaction in a lot of your life. Well, you technically, should, you don't have to have an attorney. Correct. You I can think, represent yourself. Correct. I would, uh, you... What do you think of that? You deal with, I mean, you I deal would, with the general public I would, more than I do. I always tell people that for yeah. like the low cost of an attorney, like I'm not going to pull any legal fees for you and take the liability on, yeah. so yeah. you're on your own. Yeah. And even my attorneys are like, it's so it's cheaper than what I pay myself an hour, so like they refer it out. It would be foolish. It would actually, like, I would use the word stupid to not have an attorney in a transaction. Yeah, I mean, you go to other states and they don't have attorneys. You're buying but, an $800,000 home or a condo or a million dollar place and you're relying on your own thing to, to understand it. But like, yeah. here, here's my question though, like, because I have zero drive to ever o open up a title company. But even now, it's funny, because you know, I've been around since you know, the late 80s, even though I'm young, but around the business, like mm -hmm. seeing how it works. But I remember during, the, right before the bubble years, you know, everybody was opening up these title companies and everybody wanted to get in. And then when the bubble burst, you saw like all these title companies just get wiped out. And now I'm starting to kind of see again, I won't name any names, but there's some Big companies down here that have now started to open their own title oh, yeah. companies up, Absolutely. Uh, realtors that is, and like me, I got enough on my plate, I don't want any more liability to take care of, but like, what's the benefit? Like, why would they want to take on that extra liability? I, uh, a, I, th I think they're just doing it for a, res a revenue stream. B, it is a business, you, and, the, the, and there's risk to it. You have title claims. The more you do, the, the more likely you are to get title claims. If you're, you're doing a handful of deals a year, it's not really gonna hit you, but, um, you're going to do a couple thousand, you're going to get a claim. So you're going to have to run a business just like you're running this. And yeah. lots of times I don't see how that works with some of the realtors. Yeah. Um, one of the attorneys I work with um, has a realtor that works at a company that prefers using their in-house title company. Yeah. And the realtor went out to a listing agreement. He came to my office one day. He says, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I said, why? He goes, he went out to a, li a listing to get the a listing agreement signed. He then put a paper in front of him saying, hey... I also, own, my company also owns part of this title company. Will you sign this and use our title company? And the guy goes, sure, no problem. And then started asking the realtor a half a dozen questions about title that he right. could not answer. Right. That he came back to his attorney and said, I looked like an idiot. Yeah. I almost yeah. lost the deal. Yeah. I don't care where you order title. I want nothing to do with it. I want to be able to say it's not working because of title or it's yeah. working because of title, but it's not on me. I mean, that's the way I feel. So I got enough shit. I don't want to deal with it. And you know what I mean? Has there ever been like a conflict of interest for a realtor to do something Well, like that? App Properties does that. And I mean, they're, I'm not saying anything bad, but like every time you go under contract, they send you like, hey, here's a disclosure that we own the title company that we, we send it to. You know, yeah, they um, have a they have a big presence. They yeah. were one of the first ones to do it, and they're, they're, they're they incredibly property. well. With yeah, it. yeah. So what what about like the breakdown of cost though? Like so like how do how do you determine how much these things cost? I mean, you threw around like seventeen hundred for two hundred thousand on a condo, or four mil four thousand for a million bucks, or like how does this who 
determines these prices? Because I think there's like a rate card or something like that. Yeah, there is a rate card. And it, it, it's a good question. And what is a rate card? So we so, get so the the rate card is the the costs of the costs of the title insurance and the lender products and the closing fee. So in different states, um, title rates are are filed. So every year at the beginning of the year, you put together your rates, you send it to the state, and those are the rates you charge for that year. You can't deviate from that. Other states have filed rate states that are, that are created by the state. That's like Texas and Florida. Um, no, regardless of what title company you go to in Texas and Florida, the price is the same, which is really nice. However, those are the two most expensive states in the country. Yeah. In Illinois. Texas and Florida crush it. No yeah. state income tax in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. High title insurance yeah. costs. Yeah. Uh, Fucking kill it. I, and uh, in Illinois, you have this rate card. I don't want to use the word Wild West, but it could change twice a year. You could typically see title companies, a bit large underwriters, raise their fees once or twice a year. So, quick question: Who's the cheapest state for title? You're going to get some. Uh, you could say Illinois, out uh, south of 57. Okay. Yeah, if you go down to like Bloomington, Illinois, Chuck uh, Vegas, Charleston, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, you go down. Sure. Yes. Vegas. Jimmy G in the Super Bowl, baby. Yeah. 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 You, go, you go out yeah. to Charleston. You're going to yeah. pay. Nothing for title. Okay, That's they just give it to you. They're yeah. like, here it is. Here's, you got a dollar. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay. So, like, I get a lot of clients that um, because the, in, you know when the bubble bursts for all of our listeners out there, they change a lot of the loan guidelines because there was a lot of like rich dad poor dad weird shit going on. And the government's like, we gotta kind of regulate this a little bit more because it's kind of out of control. And one of the things they put on this new disclosure, which now they're calling like a, a, a CD, mm-hmm. is that the buyers can actually shop title themselves. We'll get these buyers that find, and I don't know how, and I'm not talking bad about anybody, but they'll find something online where, like, you're saying it's 1700 and they'll find it for, like, 50 bucks. Like, it's crazy, like, out of control, different prices. As a seller or a buyer? As a buyer. Okay, so the buyer, yeah, you can bifurcate a closing. So what that would mean is the sell side closes at Lincoln Title, and the buy side decides. They get cheaper fees on the buy side. They want to close at Chicago Title. But I will tell you, it is a nightmare. It is extremely difficult. You now have two title companies involved. You have money going back and forth from title companies and lenders. That's why you don't see a lot of bifurcated deals where you're closing at separate places. The title companies that are online, I think one of them is called um, eDirect or Direct Title. I, I've seen that before. Um, you have to look at the accessibility of the underwriting. Can you get a hold of somebody? Yeah. Um, how... how how do you handle things when there's a problem? So one of the attorneys I work with as a buyer's attorney got forced into using one of these online title companies. Yeah. Fast forward six months, his guy goes to sell his property. His deed's not recorded. He can't get a hold of anybody. The company was out of Atlanta. I can't remember what the name of it was. We won't bash and, him yeah. on here. We don't want to yeah. get a lawsuit in yeah. our hands here. But, uh, but that's the trouble he had. He, I mean, listen, I, I believe you do what you pay for. I, yeah. I'm just curious because, you know, it's a huge question clients ask all the time. They'd be like, I found, you know, some unknown thing. And I'm always like, listen, like, I've never heard of them. Nobody's ever used them. Like, yeah. is it worth an extra $500? And I'm not trying to just spend people's money. But Correct. at the end of the day, like, it's better. When you're buying something so big, like, why throw the dice of something that nobody's you ever heard of? a dollar store. You could. They do, they're, they're doing that on the side, though. That They do it out of the back as the title insurance. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you, your, mar- your market's primarily Chicago, Atland area? We only do downtown Chicago. Yeah. You have claims down here. You have claims down here. What, no what's the biggest here. claim that happens? What do you see most often? Uh, property taxes. People forget to pay them? Uh, pe- people forget to pay them. And, and in well, co- here's the thing. I will tell you. I've, I, I own a couple properties cash, yeah. and they don't send you the bill. And then you file yeah. it back with the city, right. and they'll send it and like... We have parking space pins here, and yes. if you own a bunch of properties and you have like you know a bunch of parking spaces with those ones, I mean, and you're a busy person, like I, I, there's a lot of times where I almost miss paying a tax bill, yeah. a lot. Parking spaces are, are some of the biggest problems we have in the city because the they have their own pins, and over time, sometimes amendments get recorded at, at uh, condominiums, and every time an amendment adds property <clears throat> or or the percentage interests or uh, changes new pins get issued. So now all of a sudden, a guy sitting there in uh, unit 57, and he gets some new tax bill. He's like, hey, this is a different pin. And I've seen this happen. He throws it away. He doesn't pay it. Right. He's like, I'm not going to pay this. Spam this, mail. It's a, different, it's a different pin than I yeah. normally have. He doesn't know why it's changing. Yeah. And we get a lot of claims from a parking space property taxes. So what's the cloudiest thing that you see? <laughs> you that? The cloud, uh, mechanics liens, property taxes, and uh, judgments. So craziest story you have? I got, I got a couple. So when I first got in the business, and I don't, and I wasn't a big hockey fan then, a Russian, an older Russian Blackhawk 
okay. came into closing to buy a high end unit and he brought cash. Just like straight up cash? Straight up cash. Not knowing that that they sent him away at the like time. Duffel down. bag. Duffel bag. bag. Yeah. And they I, sent him down to LaSalle Bank. To my my yeah. first sale crazy. downtown Chicago, yeah. like actual city, uh, I sold at a place at 200 North Dearborn. Remember American Investco Development? Mm-hmm. And uh, my client came with a backpack full of cash, but like all in Ziploc bags. So he started laying it on the table. Yeah. Uh, and it was at the old 161 Clark. Remember yeah. that? And people like people freaked, like freaked out. Yeah. And he had to go and like get like a bunch of different checks. It was it was the it was like bricks of cash. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, before. my guy was uh, the, the Russian guy was it was someone innocent. He just didn't know. Maybe that's what they do in Russia. Well, like, he was from my was guy was from problem? China. He yeah. didn't know. He didn't speak English. Yeah. How much was that? Oh, it was close to a million bucks. That's million awesome. He comes in with cash. He came with a big. big like, Thing table? He had a big duffel bag. That's sick. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Some of the other stuff. You have you have fights at the table. Yeah. Uh, um, spouses or who are getting divorced, fighting oh, yeah. at the table, yeah. or, or brothers who own property together. They hate each other. Yeah. Any yeah. fist fights? Blood? Uh, I, I, Stabbing? When I was told that the husband and wife jumped over the oh, table. Oh, that's awesome. A little bit. Man, you gotta get cameras in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, what about like on a business aspect? Like how how do like how is Owning a title company profitable? Like, wh- you, what's the monetary volume. value? You Just volume? volume? You got on the residential side, you have to do volume. We do uh, a lot of commercial as well, a national commercial. Yeah. Which offsets if you slow down in the in the residential side in the winter months. We um, but you have to do volume on the residential side. So, and in uh, like talking about money, like realtors, not realtors, attorneys make money off title uh, in Chicago. What's the percentage that an attorney will make off a seller's policy? 80% and up. Okay. Yeah. So they make a decent chunk of change off correct, it. Correct, correct. So that's why, uh, so for, for you guys, on a business aspect, and for people out there who, who you know own title companies and stuff like that, you guys probably, your network to try to get as attorneys, right? Like that's your goal is to try to get them in? Um, I try and get attorneys, uh, commercial and residential real estate developers, and yeah. commercial and residential real estate attorneys that do stuff on a national level. So you want, you want big volume attorneys, big volume builders? Um, I will take, I will take... Uh, I like to call them. I will take attorneys that hit singles and doubles all day long. Well, I'm happy to do that's that. That's why Derek. I always I always talk about this. Yeah. That's how Derek Jeter's one of the best players ever. Yeah. You know, singles and doubles they keep you in the game. You know, get you on base. Yeah, he was all in bit. Right. You remember that? Yep. You know what he is? He's Italian. Yeah. Jeter. I don't know. I'm oh, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. a Yankee. I don't know, yeah. man. I'll take him. You know, yeah. you get a bunch. You get 20 guys that hit singles and doubles. It adds up. You're right. Yeah. So like, like what separates your title company from like the other big title companies? Um, one of the things I kind of I, I like to tell people is they try and take title companies like to think that there's a boogeyman out there. So they look at a title and they'll see, let's say, a, a prior owner's mortgage or something out there that just scares them into thinking, oh, we're not doing it or we're not clearing it. And I take a more realistic view. Yeah. Not necessarily an insurance view. I don't take on unnecessary risk, but. I'll make a decision outside of an insurance point of view. Makes sense. Yeah, and, and I'll take on some risk if somebody's willing to take on a risk with me. If a homeowner says, hey, I paid these assessments, or I have a beef with my homeowners association, uh, can I give you an indemnity? I don't want to pay the 2000 until I get it negotiated down. If, if, the, the, if, if the facts make sense, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. What, and then, like, talking about title, like, what is the future of title? Like, where's, where's title heading? Is there anything gonna, big going to change, or is it kind of like just something that's always going to be just kind of pretty similar? The underwriting will still be there. You'll still need a backroom underwriting team. Yep. Um, I think title will get quicker from the technology standpoint. We used to have a guy sitting in the basement at the county getting docs. Come on. Manually Whoa. getting docs, yeah. Like, just one guy in a room? There was, like-, like, a hand. It started with a whole bunch, and then as times progressed, yeah, there's still one guy down there. Just in your title company? Is there uh, windows I, down there? Yeah, there's a guy. No windows. Yeah. Is there a water phone? <laughs> a he's like, is he chained to the... I guess, I, right now, imagine like this black hole. He's chained to the desk. Yeah, he's got like a pee bucket next to him. He's not even allowed to go. Yeah, shield. paper stacked up. Well, that's how it is down there. And he... There's, uh, <laughs> he's chained up to yeah. so, um, so, so, yeah, I think technology, will get, you'll get your searches quicker. We're able to store our files quicker. And it works out better. Okay. Uh, and is technology going to uh, affect it all? You mentioned DocuSign. I mean, a lot of my clients are always asking, when can I just DocuSign this and be done with it? Well, the, I, I was actually, I was just telling John Paul, I was in Arizona last week and I was talking to somebody who said he did his re- refinance via DocuSign. But he also added that after he did that refinance, he proceeded to get like 
50 to 100 malware emails that were DocuSign. It's a little so, risky still. So, yeah, point. it's still need, there's still some kinks that need to be knocked out because you have uh, something that we hadn't touched on is the biggest thing title companies are dealing with now is wire fraud. It's oh, yeah. a very big deal. How are people getting around that? I mean, we got a couple of them. What do we got? Like, what are people doing for that? Well, we're kind of having to go back to being old school where we're verbally verifying everything. We're getting on the phone and we're calling Chase and we're saying, are these your wire instructions? And everybody kind of gets upset at the table because it, it, it like slows everything down. But I can't, I can't even count how many times whether the attorney got hacked, the seller or the buyer got hacked, or we got hacked where people came in and sent out fake wire instructions to us or to the parties. So a buyer sending in extra money and they have fake wire instructions or the seller's money, the, the pros, the overage for the proceeds or the payoff have fake wire instructions. What, why don't we just go back to bringing checks? I would love that. Like what? I mean, cause right now for, that. and for, for everybody out there, just so you know, uh, after the bubble burst, the bubble burst, uh, you cannot bring a check over $50,000. Mm -hmm. So if it's 50,000 and one penny, a title company cannot take Correct. a check. So yeah. why not be able to just take these cashiers check again? What, what's what's I, I, I feel know. much more comfortable walking around with three hundred thousand dollars and a check than hitting a button and wiring it to somebody. I really do in the today's and, and age. especially when a closure is is busy on a Friday at three o'clock end of the month in April. Yeah, and then you have everybody him and hawing. Why is it taking so long? I could see where mistakes are made. So we try and tell them, hey, we're doing this for your best interest. Right. And once you tell them that, they kind of ease up a little bit, but they still want everything to be, you know, a closing. In we're, an instant grat we're an instant gratification yeah. society, yeah. man. That's yeah. just how it is. Uber, Jimmy John's, it's ruined our lives. Right. Right. So right. everything's got to be quick and fast. Yeah, that's yeah. it, man. So we have something called the Fast Five, where the co-host, Mr. JP himself, asks five questions. John Paul, you got these ready, buddy? All right, yeah. So what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? If you do a good job, the money will come. That's good. I like it. Do you uh, love to win or hate to lose? My hate, favorite question. I hate to lose. It'll stick with me so for weeks. Yeah. Weeks. Yeah. yeah. And I still talk about losses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, likewise. Um, who's, your, uh, who's your biggest hero? My father. All right. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, to, to to read minds. To read minds. Oh man, that could be Never dangerous. So now, are you a Marvel or DC guy? So they, uh, what is it, Doctor? Uh, Doctor Strange. Dr. No, Doctor Xavier, right? Oh, Professor Xavier. Professor, Professor Xavier. Xavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a minds. I'm a comic book nerd. Yeah, yeah I got read it. The minds. Yeah. yeah. And last one. What makes you Chicago? Oh shoot, my roots are here. My grandparents were born here. My parents are born here. I was born here. My sisters are here. It's just I'm Chicago. You know, I grew up on the north side. Everybody else. Everybody We're South Siders, but yeah. yeah. So did you put ketchup on your hot dog? Oh, no, mustard only. Okay. Yeah. I, I put ketchup. My dad would get after that. All right, so where can people find you and what do you want to plug? Uh, if you're looking for a title company that has a proactive approach and could cut through the red tape, give us a call, david at lincolntitlecompany.com. Put that across the bottom there. So make sure to tune in our next episode and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to The Matt Lercy Project. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.